Lake State Mobile Court convicts lady for assault on a guest operative. Federal government charges stakeholders in electricity supply chain to create basis for removal of power subsidy. And the Warrington Israeli forces kill at least 21 people waiting for aid in Gaza. And in sports, Paris Mayor Ani Hidalgo frowned at inclusion of Russian athletes in 2024 Olympic Games. And now the details, I am Mike James. Lagos Environmental Sanitation Court, Lagesk, says a special offences court sitting at Boladio Shudi has convicted a 22-year-old lady, Fasia Adjoke, for assaulting a female operative of the agency while on lawful duty. Adjoke assaulted the operative who prevented her from crossing the highway, persuading her instead to make use of the illegal pedestrian bridge in order not to endanger her life. Commercial of the agency, Olani Kool, said it is rather unfortunate that despite the efforts to make pedestrian bridges free of hindrances, some people are bent on breaking the law and assaulting officers on lawful duty, which would not be tolerated. Kool, who said the judge sentenced the accused to seven months and three weeks in jail, with the option of 80,000 IRA fine, reaffirmed the resolve of the state to prosecute any default found breaking the law. The Lagos State Local Government Service Commission, LGSC, has organized a two-day sensitization program for eligible officers on grade levels 12 to 16 in the 57 Unified Local Government System for the 2024 promotion exercise. Chairman of the Commission, Kamal Bayou, who advised them on the need to take the new level seriously as lobbying will not be allowed, stressed that seniority will be a major criterion for becoming head of a department or unit. Earlier, the Permanent Secretary, Local Government Service Commission, Abosedi George, emphasized the importance of the revised structured training program, saying it is mandatory for all eligible officers, irrespective of their cadre and grade level. George also implored them to read the 2022-2023 LGSC Annual Report, Public Service Rules and Financial Regulations, as these are necessary for oral interview and also take their job specific training seriously, dress properly and pay attention during the exercise. The Senate has called on the federal government to expand its coverage of the National Health Insurance Scheme, NHIS, to cover patients with chronic kidney disease. This resolution was sequel to the adoption of a motion sponsored by lawmaker representing Katina Central, Abdul Aziz Yardwa during plenary. In his presentation, Yardwa said recent statistics from the Nigerian Association of Nephrology revealed that 25 million Nigerians were living with kidney diseases. He noted that the cost of dialysis sessions in the country ranges from 20 to 50,000 per session, and kidney transplant is financially unattainable for many, leading to low adherent rates. Yaradwa added that it is imperative that the government act strictly to address the increasing rate of kidney disease by increasing awareness, improving treatment facilities, expanding insurance coverage and supporting infection prevention measures. And over to the rest of the stories. The Minister of Power, Bio, that's Adibayo, Adilabu has taxed stakeholders in the electricity supply chain to gear up in creating basis for the removal of electricity subsidy and a cost reflective tariff. Adilabu, during a meeting with the management of the distribution company, said other African countries, including Guinea, Togo, Mali, among others, pay more than what Nigerians pay for electricity. According to him, the challenges facing electricity are not insurmountable if all stakeholders play their roles well. Adilabu, who stated that Nigerians are complaining over the current low power supply, opined that citizens will pay more for power if it relieves them of the cost of buying fuel. 
The federal government has inaugurated a committee in Abuja to campaign against social vices in tertiary institutions. The committee is to combat social vices like drug abuse, cultism, cybercrime, sexual harassment and academic dishonesty, as, as well as others. This was as the committee said it would propose the immediate installation of closed circuit television cameras in and around all secondary schools and tertiary institutions in the country. Speaking at the inauguration, Minister of State for Education, Yusuf Sonny, urged the committee to devise new strategies in the campaign against vices and collaborate with local and foreign partners for support. In his remarks, the senior special advisor to President Bala Tinubu on student engagement Sunday, Ashefo, acknowledged the growing level of social vices in tertiary institutions, urging the committee to create an environment that fosters academic excellence and personal growth. Today is International Day to Combat Islamophobia. Islamophobia is a fear, prejudice, and hatred of Muslims that leads to provocation, hostility, and intolerance by means of threatening harassment, abuse, incitement, and intimidation of Muslims and non-Muslims, both in the online and offline world. The United Nations General Assembly adopted a resolution sponsored by 60 member states of the Organization of Islamic Cooperation, which designated the 15th of March as the International Day to Combat Islamophobia. In his message, UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres warned that Muslims face institutional discrimination, barriers and violations of their human rights and dignity. Calling for a strong stance against all forms of bigotry, the Secretary General urged leaders and individuals to condemn inflammatory discourse, safeguard religious freedom and promote mutual respect and understanding while digital platforms must take a stand against hateful content and protect users from harassment. And in some foreign news, at least 21 Palestinians have been killed after Israeli forces opened fire on thousands of people waiting for aid in Gaza City in the, name, in the same area that was targeted hours earlier. The Ministry of Health in Gaza described the attack as a new premeditated massacre, saying more than 150 people were wounded. It was the latest in a string of assault on people desperately in need of food and other essential supplies as Israel continues to obstruct and severely control the entry of aid into the enclave. Meanwhile, the Israeli military denied that its forces had opened fire on the crowds. And over to sports news, Paris mayor and Hidalgo has advised against Russian athletes participating in the Paris 2024 Olympic Games and attending the opening ceremony scheduled for July 26. Hidalgo said Russian President Vladimir Putin is a dictator who threatens Europe as a whole and is waging war against Ukraine, denying them the right to exist as a nation. She noted that it will be recalled to difficult to see even under the neutral flag because of how much emphasis Putin puts on Russian athletes. The International Olympic Committee said in December that Russian and Belarusian athletes who have qualified for Paris 2024 will be eligible to compete as neutral athletes, provided they meet eligibility requirements. It is yet to announce whether Russian and Belarusian athletes can take part in the opening ceremony under the neutral flag. And that was our news at 12, but just before we go, always make sure of pedestrian bridges where available. You can follow us and like all our various social media platforms, X, formerly Twitter, Traffic Radio 961, Instagram, Lagos Traffic Radio 961, watch us live on Facebook, Lagos Traffic Radio 96.1 FM. On YouTube, subscribe and watch all our previous programs and news on our channel, Traffic Radio 961. Did you know that the Solo administration constructed towers with alarm bells and perimeter fences in model colleges? You can get more details on the Legacy Government website and to end the news, here are the highlights of the major stories. 
Lagos Environmental Sanitation Corps, Lagask, said a special offences court sitting at Boladio Shide has convicted a 22-year-old lady, Fasia Adjoke, for assaulting a female operative of the agency while on lawful duty. The Minister of Power, Adibayo Adilabu, has taxed stakeholders in the electricity supply chain to gear up in creating bases for the removal of electricity subsidy in a cost-reflective re tariff. We also told you that at least 21 Palestinians have been killed after Israeli forces opened fire on thousands of people waiting for aid in Gaza City in the same area that was targeted hours earlier. And then in sports, Paris Mayor Anne Hidalgo has advised against Russian athletes participating in the Paris 2024 Olympic Games and attending the opening ceremony scheduled for July 26. And for contact with the newsroom, send a message to Lagos Traffic Radio at lagosstage.gov.ng. And that ends the news broadcast. It was compiled by Sadiq Yusuf. My name is Mike James. Good afternoon and thank you for listening.